So, what's marketing? Marketing is the ability to sell a product. Good marketing or bad marketing splits the difference in a profitable business from one doomed to failure and agony. Can you survive without marketing? Well, yes. But it's like jumping in the car and trying to go somewhere with flat tires. Eventually, you can drive, but the ride will be harsh and you will ask yourself, why is this so hard? Today, we're going to see how to apply 10 simple marketing rules in your 3D printing venture, inflating your tires and make your company glide down the road. I'm Richard. This is 3D Printing for Money, the channel that helps you make more money with your 3D printers. Let's get down to business. Just to have everyone on the same page, marketing is not sales. The two are related, but not the same thing. Marketing comes first and eases the sale process. Sales are just a result of good or poor marketing. I apply these rules daily in my company and I encourage you to get serious about improving your marketing skills. Rule number one, focus on one niche. This is one of the points I see the most overlooked. You can't operate and sell random stuff in one single store. You aren't a marketplace. Amazon is a marketplace. If you have a website or a shop and list everything you can make with your 2D printers, it won't end well. You don't pull up a bazaar. Build a focalized shop where you can uniquely brand your products. It is very hard to copyright and brand if you make vases, household goods, statues, fixtures, all in one storefront. If you want to develop more products, you have my blessing, but open different websites or seller accounts. Point number two, talking of quality prints in 2021 is overrated. If you're selling 3D prints, I get for granted that you're selling great quality 3D prints. Guys, seriously, if your prints aren't top notch, don't even bother selling them. If layer lines are somewhat acceptable, given the technology, layer shift, dimensional inaccuracies, or brittle parts are a hard no. If your prints suffer from these or similar issues, go back to printing 101 and solve them before thinking of selling 3D prints. Selling bad prints is a very short-term strategy that isn't future-proof and yields poor dividends. Rule number three, show, don't list. Talk about the benefits for the customer. Don't brag about the product characteristics. 90% of items listed on Amazon, Etsy, or eBay have a brief description of the item and sometimes what it does. If you want to stand out, you can't do the same. You can't say keychain, XY dimension, Z material. If you want to do so, you will just be another seller in the game. A little drop in the sea, one of many but I'm sure you don't want to be one of many. You want to be more. To be more, you must distinguish your listings from the pack. Write about the benefits your customers will experience, the problems your item solves, the joy and proudness the buyer will have when showing off your print to his friends. Point number four, build a brand, tell a unique story. An entire video can be made on solely branding. A brand is a representation to the question in your customer's mind, why should they buy from you? If you put two comparable products on the table, the customer is going to buy the product with a better brand behind it. Branding is a mix of authority, authenticity, and trustiness. See this extruder? I'm changing this knockoff because after some months, the gears gave up. I'm going to mount this genuine bond tech. I won't throw away the knockoff, but if I can choose, I trust more this 90 bucks original piece. This is branding. Rule number five, customer care. How well do you treat your customers? Do you leave them in the mud when issues arises and ghost them? Because honestly, everyone is very good to do big smiles when things are going good. But how do you react when things go sideways? 
Are you on the customer side? Do you put yourself in his shoes? Are you going to worship your customer even at the cost of losing the profit on the sale? I'm going to make you one question. From who would you buy a second time? A seller that helped you out beyond his duties or one that ghosted you after a couple of emails? Be the first seller. Rule number six, price isn't about money. What do I mean? Selling what others are selling, expect a race to the bottom on price. Give the same feature, but better customer service, faster shipping, better package, better overall experience tangible for the customer, then and only then you can start charging more. Higher pricing isn't for every item. You can't expect to start pricing a 4 inch Bobozar planter at 40 bucks and expect any sales. Delivering more value to your customers is key point. But what is value? Or better question is, what is perceived value? You see, value is a subjective parameter and the way to measure value is to use a common ground currency like money. If you deliver more value, you can obtain more money. But as we said, value is subjective. What is valuable for you isn't always more valuable for the customer. An example, maybe your perception of value is a print with very small layer height, a perfect print. So you put it in the box and ship it, believing is what the customer wants. But maybe from the customer side, a small layer height compared to an average one is equal to jack. Maybe that specific customer appreciates more the presence of a nice package, maybe a handwritten thank you card, or an extra discount on the next order. These are just examples, but you should reflect on your perception of value and the buyer's perception of value. If you do some brainstorming, is it quite possible to find out that these two values will be quite different? Rule number seven, refund policy. Develop a refund policy on your physical products with precise terms that your customer can understand. No little lines. No, it doesn't comply with section 17, comma 1, line 4. A refund policy with a FAQ is very powerful if you want to elevate customers' trust and help them understand that if something goes wrong, they will know exactly what to expect and don't have bad surprises. In another video, I'll develop a FAQ for 3D printed items. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you would like something like this. Now, let's see more operative aspects of online marketing. Point number eight, discounts. Some buyers are just browsing and looking for discounted stuff. They don't really care if the discount is 10, 20, or 30%. They want the same thing, but spend a little less. Pricing an item at 18 bucks at zero discount or at 22 bucks with a 20% discount doesn't change much for you, but in the buyer's head, the 22 buck item will be perceived as better and being discounted will be perceived as a great deal. Also, you can offer discounts for a limited time, intriguing even more the customer that a great deal has an expiration date. And once expired, the item will be back at the higher price point. This doesn't really change the value of the item, it only elevates the perceived value from the buyer side. Rule number nine, limited quantity scarcity. Ever saw those long lines at storefronts on Black Fridays? These stores are applying discounts for a limited time, resulting in a great deal situation. Throw in the fact that many others are in line and you have a time bomb called scarcity. Ever felt more attracted to products that had a red badge saying limited quantity, only three remaining? You can emulate the same when you list fewer items in your shop. Instead of putting a listing and stating more than 50 available, you can just say three available. For what we just said, you have created scarcity. And if you go sold out, you can always relist them automatically. Rule number 10, CTA, call to action. Do you insert call to action in your shop and website? 
What is a call to action? A call to action is a phrase, a button, a widget that makes your customer do something. Surprising, right? Like, duh! But making a reality check, posting a product on the internet doesn't translate to someone doing something. Want an example? Subscribe for more examples on how to grow your 3D printing farm and make more money with your 3D printers. See, this I just made is a call to action. It is a gesture that makes you do something. Really, you should consider subscribing. You don't want to miss more information on how to improve your 3D printing business, right? I did it again. Bringing up the first point and the second point, I made a double call to action, being subscribing to the channel. You have to do the same thing with your products. Be really clear with copywriting and branding and then make your buyers take action buying your 3D printing product. A script I use in my listing that works very well is to make three call to action in the listing description. One will be the first phrase of the listing, one in the middle and one at the end. So depending on the level of attention of your customer, how much he wants to read, you will always remember him that you're selling an item and not showcasing it on the web. The call to action has to be direct and clear on the line of buy this product today to solve this issue now or similar. Figure out the right call to action for your product and use it consistently. Let's see an extra tip. Rule number 11, advertising and social media. Marketing is not advertising. Advertising is a tool dictated by marketing. Advertising without a sound marketing strategy equals to shooting in the dark. You might hit something but you won't be able to replicate how it happened. I have an entire chapter on advertising in the book I wrote, where I warn on hidden advertising costs and why it isn't always reliable. Once you fix it your marketing, you can advertise your products and company on the web and on social platforms. Build a foundation, marketing, and then build on top advertising. So, go fix your marketing Put in the work and improve your business one tip at a time. See you in the next one.